Hey, this video is about a cool little puzzle where some magnets travel up a steel rod which seems to defy common sense and I want you to see if you can work it out before it is explained. And it won't be explained by me, it'll be explained by my friend Steve Mould because he sent me this video so I could share it with my viewers and uh, show you about his YouTube channel because it's also very cool. So uh, check it out, take it away Steve. I got a tweet recently from someone called Ollie Redding and it contained a video that he'd made of a strange magnetic phenomenon he'd noticed. He took a chain of neodymium magnets and attached them to a screwdriver and when he spun the screwdriver around he noticed that the magnets rose up the screwdriver. You might think, well that's obvious, it's the way you're spinning it. This flinging motion causes the chain of magnets to be flung to the outermost point which in this case happens to be at the top. But actually if you turn it upside down and do it it still rises up. So my next thought was maybe the metal rod has a grain to it. So if I spin it the other way, like if I spin it in my other hand, nope, still goes up. Strange, isn't it? I love this sort of thing. I love it when people send me these mysteries that don't yet have an explanation because in physics we have these grand mysteries like what's dark matter or why don't special relativity and quantum mechanics work together. But we also have these mini mysteries, these side quests that don't yet have an explanation but we actually have a good shot at. So. I don't have an explanation for this, or at least I didn't, but I shared the tweet and I sent it to a few friends and I think we do have an answer now, thanks to a good friend of mine called Hugh Hunt. He came up with a very clever explanation. And it's actually to do with the sound that it makes. I don't know if you can hear this, but it makes this kind of rumbling sound as it winds around the pole. And that's because this is a stick slip phenomenon and we see stick slip phenomena all the time like if you drag a violin bow over a string the violin bow sticks to the string and then if you pull enough it eventually slips and then sticks again and then slips and then sticks again and it does this sticking and sipping so fast you hear it as an audible frequency. So why does stick and slip cause the magnets to seemingly defy gravity in this case? Well, to see that we need to zoom in on this. I want to create a kind of blow up version of it. I need a giant pole. Where can I get a giant pole? So here's our screwdriver, here's our magnets and when you swing the screwdriver around, really you're pushing the magnets around. You're using the magnet's own momentum to push them around the metal rod. And the first thing that happens is that it sticks, so it rolls around like that. But at some point it can't roll anymore, so it slips suddenly. And then it rolls again, and then it slips, and then it rolls again, and then it slips. So you get this rolling, slipping motion. So why does this constant rolling and slipping cause the magnets to rise up the screwdriver? Well, think about the contact points between the magnets and the screwdriver. When the magnets are at rest, those contact points form a straight line down the middle of the end of the magnet. But as the magnets rotate around the screwdriver, those points of contact change, they shift to one side. But crucially, the pressure at those different contact points aren't the same, and this is where gravity comes in. So gravity is pulling the magnet downwards, meaning that at the top, the magnet is being pulled away from the screwdriver, and at the bottom, it's being pushed towards the screwdriver. The force at the bottom pushing the magnet against the screwdriver is greater than the force at the top pushing the magnet against the screwdriver, simply because it's being pulled down and away by gravity. This difference in pressure affects the slip 
part of the magnet's motion. So remember, the first thing that happens is the magnet rotates, and when it does that, the points of contact change. They, they move over to one side. So you've got a line of points of contact with the screwdriver over to one side, and this is the lowest point. This is the point of highest pressure. And you'll notice it's actually higher than the lowest point of the magnet, which is down here. So this is the point of highest pressure, and this is the point that the magnet is going to pivot around when it finally slips. So when it slips, it actually rolls around that point. You see how it lifts up when it does that? And then it's going to roll around again. And now the line of contact points is over here again. The lowest point is here, and it's going to slip but pivot upwards around that point. So from underneath, you can see there's the lowest contact point. So when it slips, it's going to pivot around and rise up. So I'm probably not the guy who's going to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, and you're probably not the person who's going to discover what dark matter is. But we can still dig our teeth into these mini mysteries. I thought that was a pretty cool puzzle with a fairly satisfying explanation. So thank you, Steve Mould, for sharing that with me. And I highly recommend you go check out his channel and subscribe to it. I'll put a link to it here. Uh, there's one video in particular I like where he has built his own gravitational wave demonstration. It is super effective. Uh, I'll, please go have a look and, and subscribe to his channel if you like what he does. And I will be back with more videos made by me very soon.